What's going hey, on? Hey, there's Nathan. Welcome. That's my name. Wear it out. Chris. We saw that you can, you've disproved gravity. I don't need to disprove something that's never been proven. That's like saying I disprove Santa Claus and Bigfoot. You guys are a joke. Hey, Santa, Claus is, <laughs> Santa Claus is real, though. Santa Claus is real, though. Well, no, look, Nathan, that was the title of the video. Yeah. <clears throat> I said the BBC so how, debunked, guys. I did not say Nathan. How, how did they do that? Debunked. How did the well, BBC just put gravity? They said water molecules travel up, apparently defying the laws of gravity. What's no. the law of gravity, Nathan? Uh, it's not a law. It's not even, dude, it's a joke. It's a vain religious superstition. Uh, godless engineer, I would love to hear your scientific proof for gravity. Ready? Go. All right. Please tell me, Nathan. What is the well, law of the gravity law. according God, to science? You get proof of gravity. Now I'm telling you something. What's the law of gravity according to science, Nathan? Um, you're going to give me scientific evidence for this nonsense, godless. I thought oh, I'm Jesus waiting. Christ. The entire audience is waiting. You've got 600 people here watching the show, godless. Surely you're not going to fumble and not have any scientific evidence for G. Just answer my question, Nathan. Oh, I can recite it. Can you? Questions. All right. I'll, I'll answer your questions. Are you taking notes, Godless? Do you have a pen and paper? I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. I'm taking hey, notes, can Nathan. I, can I get a quick mic check? And can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, hey, I can hear good. you, team. Okay, good deal. Go ahead, I'm go ahead Nathan. Enter into this conversation. Go ahead, so, Nathan. Uh, the seconds now the entire audience 600 people are waiting for godless engineers scientific proof of gravity ready go you have you're gonna laugh you think it's funny you got 650 people watching your show you're gonna laugh when i ask you for scientific proof of gravity godless that's the best you can do is laugh no, you just want him to answer, answer or you're gonna let me answer that? you to laugh you just want him to answer that, or do you want me to answer that for you? Because I can answer that for you, and for 700 oh, hold people on, that are watching. Skeptic. Hold on, Team yeah, Skeptic. Hey, team Nathan, Nathan, you said yeah. that the law of gravity isn't a thing. Please, Nathan, tell me, what is the law of gravity? If you can answer that basic question, I will be law, happy. Retard, it's not a law. So you're asking, you're begging the Nathan, question fallacy. He said he would answer you. He said he would answer you, but he did, in all fairness, he said he would answer, answer you, but you did. You did. You did. Ask, he did ask you a question first. So answer his question, and then he will answer yours. He will give you proof. I can answer the question, Kyle. Not a law. He's what is making the question? What is gravity? Uh, well, what is gravity first? That globe heads think causes all things to fall towards the center of Earth at a constant uh -huh. rate, despite the fact the equation for gravity has a, a inverse square law. Which would cause a big problem for this constant of gravity because things should be getting exponentially lighter as they leave. Hey, you want me to tell you where you're fucking wrong with that? You hey, you want me to educate you on a little something there? Hey, jackass, hold on. Hey, jackass, listen to me for a second. When, you, when you're talking about 100 miles up above the Earth's surface, listen here, jackass. When you're talking about 100 miles up above the Earth's surface, you're talking about a difference of the distance between the Nobody center of point of gravity of 6,371 kilom uh, kilometers versus 6,471 kilometers. That is not that big of a difference. Apply that to your inverse square law and you'll have your fucking answer. You don't understand what you're talking about and that's your fucking problem. Team, skeptic, what? you said you had scientific proof. Yeah, hell yeah, I do. Ready? Hell Go. yeah, I do. All right. When you do, hey, objects and objects in free fall do not ex, uh, objects in free fall do not ex, uh, experience an accelerating vector because number one they 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 uh, follow the laws of motion which say that once they are in motion they are experiencing an opposite and equal reaction uh, of force. Correct. So in other words, when you're driving forward in your car, you feel like you're being pulled backwards. Will you agree with that? Yes or no? Do you wow, agree with that? No, oh, hey, hey, shut up and just, hey, wow. shut up and answer me. You want your, you want your answer. You want your answer. Hey, shut up and listen. You want your answer, and I'm going to walk you through your answer so you don't fucking misrepresent it moving forward, okay? So when you drop 
an object in free fall, if you have a, gra a, a density column and you drop that density column in free fall, it doesn't, it isn't a fucking density column. Do you know why this occurs? Do you have a fucking scientific answer for that? Because gravity is the reason that that occurs. And there's no other way of explaining that fucking uh, observational phenomenon that you all you fucking I ignorant really pieces of shit want there's your observational okay. phenomenon all right now deal with that yes, answer me that thing. okay let him answer let him answer of gravity is everyone hearing this you guys joking right surely you're gonna save these globe heads from the droppity oh. that you believe is oh. gravity causing prove, all prove him wrong towards Nathan. prove me wrong Nathan. Prove him wrong Nathan. Prove you're wrong. Prove him wrong. you haven't proven anything what's your observed phenomenon einstein I just fucking explained it to you. An object in free fall does not experience an accelerating vector for the for buoyancy to even work. When does an object in free fall natural phenomenon? When do you observe things naturally falling from the sky, Team Skeptic? Yeah, when you observe them naturally falling from the sky, like in the vomit comet, when it goes into free fall, correct? There, it loses its uh, buoyancy. It loses its density vector, its buoyancy vector, to assign which direction oh, heavier objects that? should be. Oh, that is your fucking that's... problem. You guys have no fucking clue what you're talking about. You want to talk about Boy. buoyancy, but you don't want to talk about the accelerating force. So when you have an accelerating force going down, like gravity, and you're accelerating down, creating the opposite and equal reaction of acceleration in the opposite direction, those two accelerating forces combine and have a zero con uh, a zero force. They combine and they equal out. And once you have that, apply that to your buoyancy equation and put zero in there for G or A, and guess what you get? You get no buoyancy. And that's your fucking observational phenomenon well, so right fucking there. Explain well, so that without can't. fucking Let's get the team seven. Hold on. Now, with your equation. Guys, now answer it. Guys no, no. Here, you have to jump on with 700 people and say things fall down, and that's my scientific proof of gravity. Okay. You're not well, listening to Nathan. Know. Nathan, you're not listening to what he's saying. He, he, wow. he. You're not listening to the thing he's saying. Listen to what he says. Yeah, okay. And respond oh, to okay. what he says. Oh, Nathan, hold on. Go ahead. Now I feel like we need to get on the same the same level here. Okay, Nathan. I understand that you don't think that the law of gravity is a thing, okay? I get that you don't think that. I get it. Hold on, Nathan, Nathan. Nathan, can you please stop for one minute, okay, bud? I get that you don't think that it's a law, but I'm just asking you point blank, can you recite the law of gravity for us? I will be happy if you can do that, Nathan. Well, that depends. Are you Globeheads believing in Newtonian gravity or Einsteinian gravity? It doesn't and fucking matter. There's a goddamn it. equation that explains yeah, both. You I fucking ignorant idiot. It's three on one here. This is Nathan, pathetic. Nathan, it's, really, it's really just a simple equation. I could hey, tell listen, it to guys, you, but I want to know listen, if you listen. know it. We got to let him We got to let him answer, okay? We got to let him answer. Yeah, so, I'm, Nathan, I'm, will you please answer that, answer that question? Yes, the law of gravity is not a law. It's a vain religious superstition where globies assign a vector down, which helium balloons don't go down, Team Skeptic. And then they say, look at everything okay, we'll falling that. down. That's the proof of gravity. Well, one, we don't have an observed natural phenomenon. Two, you don't have an hypothesis linking an effect and a cause, and you don't have Okay, do you really want to walk observed? through this? Do you really want to walk through this? Because I've had, I've been listening to Nathan Oakley talk about this misunderstanding of the scientific method all the fucking time. Let's talk about hey. your misunderstanding now. My observational phenomenon is that when things are in free fall, when they are let go wait, and drop, wait. they, listen, fall, listen, 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 I just let you talk. Now you fucking let me talk. Now you let me talk. How about when a fucking apple falls from a fucking tree? Then it's in fucking free fall. Okay? So You're when muted, it, when an way. object when an object is in free fall, it loses its uh directional vector for the buoyant force to work. That is something that we observe. We drop something, we drop a a uh, density column in free fall and nothing remains hold on. 
nothing remains in order from most dense to least dense. It loses that order. Why is that? My hypothesis is that due to the due to the uh, to the third law of motion for every action that there's an opposite and equal reaction in combined with an accelerating force that is accelerating the object towards the earth that that that's what my hypothesis is that there's the, the reason we're losing this uh, direction or this uh, this density uh, vector is because that there is a gravitational vector, an accelerating vector towards the earth. It is observational, it's explainable, and now it's your turn to disprove it. Why do we see that if there is no gravity? And team skeptic, let him uh, let him answer without, uh, guys, let him answer without anybody breaking in. Let's see if, uh, Nathan, now prove what he just said wrong. Yes, so he said, when an object is more dense than the air or medium around it, it falls. That's our argument, relative density. He just attaches a downward force and forgets about helium balloons and everything else that rises upward when the medium is less dense. So gravity is nothing more than a fundy belief, guys. You still haven't given me scientific evidence for gravity. You're observing things falling and asserting a force. Well, helium balloons don't fall. They don't. So yes, they do. Yes, okay, they do. Put Nathan, them in a vacuum chamber and watch them fall. We don't Nathan. live in a vacuum chamber. We don't, we don't need to live Nathan. in a vacuum chamber. The same phenomenon Nathan. explains both. Nathan, can you please explain you the basics of the mathematics surrounding buoyancy and the buoyant force? Excuse me, Godless. What was that? I said, can you please can you please explain the mathematics of buoyancy to me? Like very basic level mathematics. Yes, of course. When an object is in a medium that's less dense, it'll rise. And you guys think it's like anti-gravity or something. It's hilarious. So I'm still, guys, the scientific method is very clear. Observe natural phenomenon, form a hypothesis experimentation where are you guys missing all this where, where is all this experimentation because what? let me let no, me tell you what on. we're missing we're missing your explanation for certain phenomenon that are absolutely observable and you're jumping from point a to point z without observing and accounting for points b c d and all the way through y that's why we have a problem with what you're saying you can't explain to me why a helium balloon goes up you have no idea why it does you just say it does you say oh it's naturally it and god made it come up because god likes helium balloons more than he likes nope. fucking oxygen oh, Dude, nobody's talking about God. The balloon is less dense than the air around. And what so does that matter? Density is nothing but an observable fucking property of, a, of an amount of matter uh, in, uh, an amount, in a yeah. certain amount of volume. Okay, yeah, so with your force. density... I'm sorry? And then What'd you, you say? just sort of for it when things fall down. Okay, here, let me ask you a question. I've got an idea. I, I have not proposed this to anybody yet, but I guess you're going to be the first jackass I propose it to, okay? So let me ask you, why do things fall? Why do you say relative density? Let's say we have an object that is less dense than another object, what? and we'll say they're liquid. Why? Hold on. Why? Why yeah, hold on. Hold on. Like, hear me well, out. Hear me out. Down. Hear me out. The hear me they out. They're the down. same. Hear me out. They're the same. They're in a grab. They're in a density column. Okay. You have the heavier on top, the more dense, the more dense on top, and the less dense on bottom. They will naturally move positions. Correct. Can we agree on that? Yes, dude. Okay, oh, great. Oh, I really? that's you're going to agree. I'm just giving you the opportunity to agree. Yes, you agree. Okay. Wow. So if we take if we take a less dense object and we put more of the less dense object on a balance beam. OK, and we have a more dense object on the other side of the balance beam. Why will the, the less dense but more massive object push that balance beam down for even though the other side of the balance beam is more dense but less massive? Explain that to me if it's all about relative density. So are you saying when you get more of stuff that goes down, why it weighs the same as a oh more dense God. object? You can't use the word saying. weight. Weight and mass are two different things. You've already said that weight, that that mass, weight is the is, is when a force acts on something. So when you have a bunch of less dense air, it's going to have more mass because gravity is pulling all of it down on top of each other. 
Okay. Oh, gravity. So when you have so when you have two when you have two objects, right? One is less dense than the other, but there's more of it. Why will it cause a scale to tip in on its side? We say okay, it's because I, gravity is pulling on the whole object. No, we say gravity is pulling on the whole object. What does that have to do with anything? Your whole your whole gravity is based on density and buoyancy. There is no it has nothing to do with the amount of mass. It is completely based on density and buoyancy. Stop talking about there's more. I've already told you it's less dense on one side, it's more dense on the other. Why is the less dense being pulled down? Because there's more of it. Because mass is yeah. affected by gravity. The force being pulling down on the more massive but less dense object is greater than the force pulling down on the more massive but less dense object. And that is why the scale will tip, even though the relative densities are different. Why is that? Why do you say relative density for one explanation, but then you can't use relative density in the other one? But we can use gravity for both. Relative density. When you get more of it, it can weigh the same or more than a denser object, Team Skeptic. That's what not what the fuck does weight have to do with any of this? That's like what you keep evil. saying. You keep saying weight like it's fucking just naturally weighs. No, it doesn't naturally weigh. It needs a fucking force pulling it down. Oh, it Otherwise, force, right? it it's just force. densities. One is more okay. dense than the yeah. other. According to your description, it should be pulling right. it down because that's how they organize themselves. Let me, okay, let me let me interject real quick. I'm sorry. Okay. So <clears throat> why things uh, uh you know the the buoyant force is pretty easily uh explained here. And uh, I was trying to get Nathan to explain it in a way but he didn't actually explain it in any kind of mathematical sense. So um for any object's relative position wherever it's at like in the universe or on the earth or whatnot it's uh its position is a, a function of the forces that are acting upon it. This is basic laws of motion kind of shit. So the buoyant force is the force that is pushing up on an object and then there's also forces that are pulling down on the object, regardless of what, what you want to call it, either gravity or not. The, when the summation of those two particular forces is equal to zero, you have the object just not reacting, like it's staying still. When the uh, force that is pushing up, the pressure or whatever that is pushing up on an object overcomes whatever force is pulling down on the object, that's when things rise. When things fall, it's when the force that is pulling down on the object overcomes the force that is pushing up on an object. This is what I was talking about when I was asking for a mathematical explanation of it. Just a very simple way to explain why things... So my question is, is, in order for anything to make sense in this conversation, we have to have a basis for you at least knowing like what the mathematical formula for gravity is because on 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 the normal model the globe model you have to take that into account for the effects that we say are there now the, the mathematical formula regardless of whether or not you know it the mathematical formula is there anything that that formula cannot predict it's a reification fallacy. You're trying to prove gravity with a formula or a concept. Do you know what a reification fallacy is, godless engineer? Yes. Godless engineer, do you know what a reification fallacy is? It's not a reification fallacy, and you're just dodging the question here. My question to you is, is there any – name one certain situation where the mathematical law, the mathematical equation – for gravity does not work. Please name one situation where it does not work. Reification fallacy, you're trying to use a man-made concept or formula to establish reality or prove something. It's a concept. It's not a proof. You haven't established gravity. You're just saying, look at my formula. It's what we observe in reality. That's but since you didn't yeah, know. but Nathan, I, I just told you, I just gave you an example where if we had used no math whatsoever. It's complete observation, complete observation. You cannot explain that without. I told you. I'm sorry. You more. told me what? There's more There's what? More. 
So if, no, 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 no. I'm not even talking. Okay, oh, no, no. You don't have an answer for that. That's understandable. The the what I'm talking about is the observable, uh, the observable phenomenon of things in free fall losing their buoyant force. Why it? Why do things in free fall lose their buoyant force? So, wait. Nothing's in free fall. You mean when an apple falls from a tree? <clears throat> no, I'm talking. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. Uh, Free fall is defined as just falling without a force pushing it, without a force giving it any direction. It's you let go of something in the direction it goes. We're just going to call it that, okay? We, we can what? argue semantics later. Listen, we can argue semantics later. You want to get into this, finding your loophole out of it, that's fine. But have some intellectual not- honesty just a bit. Hey, j- listen, I'm giving, you an, I'm giving you the question you asked for. I'm giving you that and you're dodging it, okay? You said the observable phenomenon. If we go up into fucking an airplane and it does the hyperbola, the the vomit comet, when it goes into free fall, okay, you can hold a gravity column and see that nothing, or a density column and see that nothing is, is, is organized by their densities. It's completely mixed, okay? Now, can I t- if it's just density and buoyancy, why is that occurring? So you're telling me you can get in a man-made airplane and observe things in free fall. Is that an observed natural phenomenon, buddy? Or are Yes, you it is. Man-made? Yes, it is. No, it's an observable natural phenomenon. Yes, it is. It's an observable natural phenomenon. <laughs> yes, it is. You, you, hey, you don't have to get in a fucking plane, dude. Listen, you don't have to get in a fucking plane. You can tie it to a fucking tree and wait for it to fall naturally, and the same exact observation is going to happen. So there you go. There's your natural observation. You can do it with your phone. You can do it with your phone, dude. They, they have accelerometers you can get for your phone, and you can drop your phone, and you can watch the accelerometer in your phone go to 0.0 meters per second squared. The whole time, are you going to let me get a word in? Stop, stop avoiding my questions. Density. Hey, buddy, relative density works the same on both models. We, no, don't it does not. I just thing. gave you an ex. I, I just gave you an observation where relative density thing. does not work. And how do you explain that? You're asserting a force. That's it. No, 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 no. I'm. I did not. Hey, hold on. I did not. I made an observable phenomenon that debunks what you just said. In free fall, there a density column loses its uh, any direction for it to align itself and becomes completely mixed. How do you explain that? If gravity is nothing but relative density, how do you explain that? Because the objects are falling. How, like, why would? You oh my that? God, that doesn't fucking matter, dude. Why? Why do you keep saying that that has anything to do with anything whatsoever? Do if you're saying that they're falling, then I'm telling you, you're proving me right. They don't separate out. We're on a ball. Gravity is real. They don't separate go, out. Go childish with it as much you. as you want. Go childish you. with it as much as you want, man. I don't I care. You you're you're making me look me. really good, and hey, I appreciate guys, that. Team Skeptic Thank you. has to censor me. He has to talk over me over and over because he doesn't want the audience hearing the Earth's not a spinning globe and gravity's a religion. No, he nobody wants to hear your childish shit. You want to talk about censoring Nathan Thompson? You know I got kicked out of your fucking Facebook group. Your, your Facebook group is the reason I started my channel because you know what you guys don't want to hear fucking truth about nothing about zero that's exactly what you guys do that's what y'all stand for they don't separate Mm -hmm. they don't separate go back to being a kid man I'm gonna let you talk now so everybody can hear you let him talk let him talk we're the spinning ball I gotta talk over Nathan all the time I gotta talk over him because I don't want people to hear what he's saying because I gotta censor him because I'm scared like that's his answer to my observation there you go Okay. Yeah, that's his. That's his answer to my observation. He has no answer, and he's gonna just go go full it's full blown totally kid on me. Full blown nine year old right here. Good job, Nathan. With what Nathan, seven eight hundred people can watching? You, hey, you're, can Team you skeptic, repeat him? Hold on. Yeah. T- Team skeptic. My son's nine year old. Uh, nine years old, and he doesn't act like this. I'm just saying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, then you're a four year old. <laughs> You're a four-year-old. You're acting like a four-year-old. Stop acting like a four-year-old. Act you, like uh, the man that you think right, you are. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan okay, can please, you refute what, what he said? We all learned when four years old. So, can you okay. refute what he said, Nathan? Nathan, can you refute what he said? I'm interested. Oh, what he said, that four years old? Yeah. No, not that you're not four years old. About uh, everything oh. that he said about gravity. Can you yes. refute any okay. of it? 
when you're in free fall, they don't separate out because they're also falling. Oh my, you're, you're not explaining it. You're just saying that. Why? Hey, uh, I explain let me for a second. why. Why? Let me stop you for a second. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, you're still on the line. I wanted to give you a chance to say goodbye because you you said you're you're heading out. Um, If you want to do that now, you can plug your channel. Or hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, no, uh, a bunch of people in the chat were asking if I was still on. And I said yeah, he, I was. He Obviously, this was originally scheduled for Nathan Thompson and I guess Team Skeptic, or I thought it was God and no. Engineer, but either way, um, yeah, no, it was it was cool. So I was a little nervous to, to join. To join, I, I've seen your show before. I'm definitely not I'm not a, an expert. I'm not a professional engineer or anything, but I have done a lot of research. So I, I appreciate you having me on. And yeah, um, yeah, you have my email. Yeah, so shoot me an email. And uh, sure. yeah, we'll we'll schedule all- maybe a specific, <laughs> maybe right, a man, specific topic. Boat's going over the curve. Can do. Take care, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Nathan, what were you? Go ahead, G. Well, I was just going to say that he's one, like he says that the globe model doesn't work. Nathan, you say that the globe model doesn't work. And I, I was, works, what I was simply trying to do, yeah, like I understand without- that. Team Skeptic is is trying to speak more on an observational level, but I feel like if you want to disprove the globe model, you have to use the mathematics that that the globe model uses. So in order... In order for you to say that the globe model doesn't actually model reality, I feel like you would have a better chance at objectively proving it if you could tell us, like, where, like, at what values for the equation for the force of gravity, what values do not match actual reality? Because if you just say any values, then we can actually test that and we can show how false that is. So I'm just, I'm I'm just asking, like, that's all I was asking. And the fact that you can't answer my questions or team skeptics questions. I mean, we give Nathan, we give you, we, we give you the opportunity to talk, but you don't, you're not, you're not saying it. You're not answering the the question. Can you, fallacy is he's basically saying i have a formula and it works dude you haven't proven the force well, in the formula no you haven't proven technically it. i'm saying that we have a formula and it predicts what we see in reality that's what i'm saying that reification fallacy i have a formula and it matches reality dude you don't know what a reification fallacy is godless how well, pathetic. Well, no, I I'm, 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 no, I'm saying up. that the formula hasn't been disproven. And so in order for you to say that gravity doesn't exist, that formula wouldn't work. Why are you yelling at your dick right now? Can you prove it? Can you just prove it, Nathan? It's a fallacy. Did you not get that? You're saying my It's not a reification works. fallacy, Nathan. Yes. You have a formula where you beg the question with G in the formula, which hasn't been oh, proven, to- then you go, look, mm-hmm. look, Nathan, my formula, it matches reality. You're doing some Nathan Nookley. You're doing some Nathan Nookley shit. And it matches You're doing some Nathan Nookley. But you can't disprove it. That's the point. Can you can you disprove Can you show where it's wrong? Can you show where that, that formula is wrong? I say that it's wrong, Kyle. Did you hear I know you said that it was wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, then what's the issue? What's the issue? It's a reification fallacy. You're begging the oh question my. in the equation. You assume G <laughs> in the equation. Do I need to say it you again know, slower? Do you know why it works, Nathan? Do you, do, you, do you know why it works, Nathan? Because you can make predictions based on um, uh, the the way that we uh, form yeah, gravity. Right. Kyle, do, do you, you have, know what a reification yeah. fallacy is? Do you know? No. Because now you're no. using the same shit Godless Engineer used. What a no, I don't know what a reification fallacy is. You guys call yourself I don't. a scientist? You guys call yourself a I do not. and you don't even know No, what a I do not. Fallacy? No, I do not. Never call myself a scientist. You know what I don't a know what a reification fallacy, 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 fallacy is. Well, don't try I don't to know argue science if you don't even know but, what it is. But I know what uh, I know what gravity is, and I know it, that, it, that it works. Do you have a model? Nathan, let me ask you this. Do you have a flat Earth model? I don't. We don't live on a model. They all took you and brought you to school when you're six so years you old. you don't have a model. Are you right. gonna interrupt me again, dude? No, I don't right. have a model. You all are okay. The you don't have a model. You live okay. on a model where how can you how can you say about how can Nathan. you say about Nathan the uh, 
the globe Earth when we have a model that works and makes predictions. You can it, it's testable. We have a model. And you don't even have a model. We have a model. No, Nate, we have a model. We can reify. Nathan, do you do you know what a model is? We're not talking about like a a a little model of a, a dollhouse model. Do you know what a model is? Define what a scientific model is. Does the heliocentric model have an atmosphere <laughs> that touches the vacuum of space? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, that's the second law of thermodynamics. Violation. Oh, you're one of those guys. You're one of those guys. Okay. So tell tell us then, Nathan, what's the second law of thermodynamics and how does it apply to the Earth's atmosphere, please? In the heliocentric model, let's go ahead and show you where you're wrong again. Team skeptic, you don't know what the second law of thermodynamics is. I didn't. Hold on. No, we didn't. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't straw man me. I oh, said, you explain to help. us what your concept of the second law of thermodynamics is. Okay. High pressure systems or high energy systems move to low energy systems. So You have no fucking clue what you're talking hey, about. Dude, you're talking over me. Go Let back. Me finish explaining what it is. Okay. So. High pressure systems move to low pressure systems. High energy systems move to low energy systems. So if you have a 10 to the negative 17 torr vacuum of space next to our <laughs> pressurized atmosphere that we all, all enjoy. All right, good deal. Air, I'm glad. So now we get to show you how fucking wrong you again. are. Yeah, I am because you're already wrong. You're blowing in your car thinking that the same fucking the same atmospheric pressure is down here at the surface of the earth as it is 100 100 kilometers up. No, that's what you just fucking you know asserted if you're fucking blowing it. Do you know what a reification I, fallacy is though, James? Right, exactly. Um so, okay, so you do know there's a gradient. So you, where do you think this gradient stops? When do you think it stops? Do you think it doesn't it doesn't just go up? No, at does it the at the, no? I'm not asking a location. I'm asking a numeric yeah, value. What is the numeric value at which it stops at? Because we can predict where it's going. Where the atmosphere ends, and I told you it ends. And I told you, and I told you, give me a numeric value. Since you're throwing numeric values around the ten to the negative seventeen tor, blah blah blah. Since you're throwing those around, tell us what the fucking atmosphere stops at on the Earth, and why is there a gradient? Well. <laughs> exactly. Less you don't have a fucking answer for that one either, do you? Yeah, I do. Dude, you're just going to interrupt me, <clears throat> dumbass. Less dense elements rise. So hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, scanadium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, germanium. How mercury, fucking nice mercury, that you can take the time to memorize the fucking periodic yes. table of elements, so, but you can't fucking so learn the will, fucking buoyancy yeah, equation? I'm still giving Hold on, Nathan, can you get out a hammer and so, balance so a ping pong ball atmosphere. while you do that? Less yeah. dense part so there's a pressure gradient. A spray paint can, a spray paint can has a pressure gradient inside. That's why you have to shake it. It's always in a container, Team Skeptic. Because okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this then. Necessary. Let me ask you this natural of observation. Let me tell you this natural observation. What happens when we put sulfur hexafluoride in a container and we leave the top open in where the heavier sulfur hexafluoride? Hold on. Shut up and listen to me. There is no container top on it, okay? There is no container top on it. You put the sulfur hexafluoride inside there, and according to your law of second thermodynamics, there should be the higher pressure pushing the sulfur hexafluoride out into the lower pressure atmosphere. But guess what? It doesn't do that either. You know why? Guess why, Nathan? Because of gravity, you dipshit. Wow. Wow. Reification fell. It's gravity. Wow, beautiful. Oh, what is it yeah, then? What is it? Why Why are we having two separate pressure it's systems kind of right next to uh, each other with no container? Start. How is that possible? We're gonna start. You literally said we're gonna start rolling up. You put it in a container. It's no, it's not in a container. No, it's not in a container. It's air is sitting right next to sulfur hexafluoride and it's not mixing. How do you fucking explain that? Hey, when they wield the sulfur hexafluoride. That's right. You don't have a fucking answer. When they wheeled the sulfur hexafluoride <laughs> into the room, was it in a container? When they took the when they took the top off, was it not contained? Was there two separate pressure systems? Tell me that, wow. Nathan. When you just made that off, fucking was assertion. Was there not two separate pressure systems sitting next to each other without a fucking container uh, separating them? Was was there not? Yes or no? Is a fish tank a container, Einstein? Yes or no, yes. Nathan. Yes or no. Yes, yes. or no. 
Okay, well then there you go. Your fucking argument means shit. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. You just admitted it right here in front of 700 people. Thank you very much. It's about time. Now we can go to gravity at some point. We can get you to admit that you're wrong about that. Wait. No, you can't cuz it's still in a container. You put You just said, no it's not. There are no you're no, now you're just being a dishonest liar. Okay, don't be a dishonest liar. I don't care how much of a jackass you are. Don't be a dishonest liar. Because you know what? You have two you have two prefer, uh, pressure differentials touching each other and they're not mixing. Why? This is your second law of thermodynamics. This is everything you think you know about everything. Why are they able to sit there? Why is the higher pressure not pushing into the lower pressure like you say it should be doing? Because there's a gradient, okay? You're oh not next God, to Oh, God, you're a so fucking stupid. You're so stupid. Back That's just the bottom line. You're dumb. You're dumb. It's just a, I was I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, but there is no doubt to there is no doubt anymore. Proof. You're on right, gonna... wall, and all you do is say things go down, Nathan. Things and we have equations with G in them. We beg the question with G. So Nathan, I have an equation. It matches reality. It's okay. a real equation. All right. All right. All right. Um, here's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to let you guys. We're, we're going to let you guys make a uh, closing statement. We're, we're going to make you. We're going to let you make a closing statement. Okay. Um, uh, Nathan, um, do you have any last words? Oh, let me let me finish your last words for you. Um, sorry about that, but you, did you he just, leave? You, no, he didn't leave. Oh, okay. he, uh, I, I wanted to finish his, his. I wanted to do his last minute statement for him. Um, Nuh-uh, nuh-uh, reification fallacy, nuh-uh, nuh-uh. All right, Team Skeptic, your final words. Well, uh, I just, I've been waiting for this for a while now because I wanted to address him on his, uh, when he said, oh, you're censoring me by talking over me, that bullshit. I don't give a fuck what you think, Nathan. Problem is, is you and your entire fucking movement are a bunch of fucking censors. That's all you want to do. You just want to censor the truth, put your fingers in your ear, close your eyes and run your mouth. You guys don't know what you're fucking talking about. We showed that not had, only has Godless Engineer showed it before, but I just showed it again. OK, it's time for you to fucking stop being a stupid fucking piece of shit, dipshit and learn some science. Stop quoting the second law of thermodynamics until you know the second law of thermodynamics. OK, other than that, I'm Team Skeptic. Kyle, thank you so much for having me on today. Godless engineer, congratulations on your wedding, man. I love both of you guys. Y'all should know this by now. I already said that I think that Godless engineer and Caitlin Chloe were the, the second greatest couple on the Internet, only behind Kyle and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we would go to get married and he would well, literally at the altar say um uh, uh what do you mean by i do or what is what is your definition for do the the, <laughs> the definitions from um ge your wrap up well yeah i'm well i'm just kind of curious team skeptic or kyle like was i like wrong in asking him for like mathematical equations and shit like do you yes, think that no. was like the wrong huh? well yeah. Yes, because yes, of the you were because, yeah, exactly. But uh, to what? to uh, to answer it um, seriously, no, you're not. Um, because here's the thing, math is the only proof out there. There is no other proof. There is no such thing as scientific proof. There's only a scientific body of evidence that we say it's a beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the reason that this is this is being caused. Okay, so the only way to to prove that is like you said with math. So that's what a model is. A model says, given this circumstance and this amount of time or whatever the case may be, we predict this result. Now, if our model is incorrect, then that means at some point our prediction is not going to make sense. And at that point, we have to throw that model out and go back to the beginning, go back to what was working and work back from that point and figure out not only why we were wrong, but how we can be more, more correct. So no, you're not wrong. And, and yes, when they talk about Newton's law of gravity and then they turn around and talk about Einsteinian's um, general relativity, the thing is, is that the math doesn't change. That's not what was discussed. That, that's not what was changed. The mathematical relationship discusses two different bodies of mass at a certain distance, and then we, uh, we make sense of that relationship with the gravitational constant. So that's how, and, and that mathematical formula makes sense 
every time we do it. There's not a single time when we do this, when we have these objects and we can fill all these um, variables in and not get the answer that we observe in reality. So until uh, no, then, uh, gravity is gravity. It's, it exists. And the moment that we met, we drop something and it doesn't go down anymore because with no additional forces on it, then we'll look back and go, huh, we got that wrong. There's something about this that we're not seeing, but for our current understanding, there is no better explanation as to what is going on than Newton's gravity for the mathematical side and Einstein's relativity for why Newton's gravity, mathematical, equa- mathematical equations work. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> Well, uh, to to summarize mine, I felt like holding him to the fire uh, on the mathematical concepts was important because I don't think that he actually understands these principles, at least to the point where he can actually say that they don't exist or they don't happen. Because, see, the thing with mathematical principles or formulas or whatnot, you can actually test those and show how they don't like map to reality like if they truly don't represent reality all you have to do is find the right combination of values and insert them in it and you will get uh you know uh values that are different than what we actually observe and i feel like you have to start off from that kind of base level if you want to say hey gravity doesn't exist and i have yet to find a flat earther that can accurately use the globe model in order to disprove the globe model. right because right like, which bank level that it's that's just, that's what we were talking that's what i said in the in the comments earlier it's the, the flat earthers their uh their way of thinking is unfalsifiable you can never tell them anything that's going to convince them that they are wrong they just will not accept it no matter what they'll always come they'll not uh they'll relative density and you say well what about this well that's because they're all falling well how why does that make a difference we can tell i can tell you why that makes a difference from with gravity i can tell you explain and show you mathematically observably and we can make predictions based upon these these observations, and sure enough, everything I predict will come out the way I say. All you can just do is uh, say, "Oh, because they're all falling." What the fuck does that even mean? Let's uh, let's read these uh, these super chats off real quick, and then we'll uh, tell everybody good night, um, guys. Thank you for coming in, uh, Team Skeptic. But um, we'll give you the the last word here in just a second. Um, pizza person Pepper says, uh, "You're taking my super chat virginity. Be gentle. Never." Uh, unapologetically atheist, no fun. I would have twerked. Uh, Ricky Bobby, if you ain't round, you're flat. Uh-huh. Uh, Scrat the Skeptic Squirrel says, if you look in, if you look the two words up, level and flat have completely different meanings. That is true. The Random Explorer, oh, hell, we have a dumpster fire. That's for damn sure. Uh, Zantar2482 says, ask Nathan where his father is. Ooh. 013232, I have footage of helium balloons Losing buoyancy in free fall. Nathan is wrong as fuck. Jen Morgan says, uh, Nathan is back in D Marvel's car again, eh? D nighttime buddy, I guess. But still, Nathan, your God is only slightly more unreal as you. Uh, Matt Pexon says, the flurfs have burden of proof, so prove it stupid. Yeah, then 619, mic drop for Father Skeptic. Riggles World, uh, can Nathan explain heavier than air flight? Um, you and Derek says, uh, does Nathan know what kind of phallic, I mean, fallacy he is? Can he explain, please explain that math? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, 013232. Uh, pro tip, people, people that don't think math is useless can throw away 666 to say something snarky because they earn more than minimum wage. Oh, burnt. Matt uh, Pexon, uh, the fervors have no model, period. All they can do is tack the globe model. Sad. You heard Nathan admit himself that they don't have a model. Um, Johan Roderick says, buoyancy equals dropity plus Jesus divided by God, Nathan's math. Again, he says, Nathan Thompson equals hashtag bitch made. Pro gunner, Nathan is off his meds, hashtag meltdown. What up, godless? Uh, Johan Roderick says, dumpster, forest, fire. And lastly, Stephen Lankford, welcome to the dumpster fire. You got there, Kyle and co. God damn. Yes, we certainly. Who's lighting up? Oh, that's uh, b for life. B ball for life didn't say anything, but thank you for the super chat. Back and forth and everything like that, but I mean it's nine, right around nine point eight meters per second. 
Hey, godless engineer, can you do me a favor? Can you take that up about two inches and just bring your hand down at a just just two inches down, just so we can keep the the numbers. When you bring that down and you accelerate towards the ground, that number should drop. Hey, hold on. Oh, and uh, by the way, Team Skeptic says uh, B Ball for Life said, "Yo, Skeptic, that was beautiful. You science the shit out of him. Thank you for the super chat." Yeah, yeah, see, there it goes down to hard. nine five. It's hard to do it, but the thing is, that's how we know. And we, that that right there is how we know that is the observable phenomenon right there that Godless Engineer has that shows you that gravity does exist, that there is an accelerating force pulling down. In fact, if he was to turn that phone sideways, I don't know if it reorients itself or not, or if it does it on the X. It does. The X and the Y should change, and the Y should be uh, zero, and the X should be at nine point eight. So here's X, and then I can't show Z because Z is kind of like yeah Z on its back. Yeah, but here's Z would X. be Z would be if you turned your phone sideways and started driving with it in a car, you would see your acceleration uh, on that you're driving in the car. Which, if yeah. you take all of those numbers right there, for our my math nerd friends like myself, if you take all of those fucking numbers right there, you can actually. Uh, you can actually uh, like predict which or, or mathematically calculate the vector at which buoyancy will align itself. So if you have a fish tank or, or how about this, a helium balloon inside of a car, you can use those numbers right there to, to, to measure out and calculate out at what angle the helium balloon will lean forward when you accelerate at a certain rate. Can't do that just saying relative density buoyancy. Fucking reification. Well, I uh, mean, Kristen you know, Forrest. Nathan tonight. He, oh, go ahead. He couldn't. He couldn't even like. He couldn't even explain like mathmat like mathematically explain like why bu buoyancy occurs. Like, I, I just I, I can't take people seriously when they don't have a basic understanding of these concepts. Like, I don't expect like a deep knowledge of it. I just would expect them to like know the 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 formula for gravity or yeah. know like how forces are are interacting with uh, when buoyancy comes into play i mean if you would just look at the the actual calculations for buoyancy he would see a little fucking g right there that represents goddamn gravity that's right i expect it deep let me just say that. Um, let me read this last super chat and we'll close out for the uh, the night. Kristen um, Forrest Laser Beam says, "Your money, you guys need some now." Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Team Skeptic, uh, thank you again for uh, for coming in. Um, GE always a pleasure. We'll be back next week. Um, the counter has started, so uh, next week will be seven days uh, with people being bitch made. If you are not bitch made, you're watching this later on, and you'd like to come on. Uh, please send me an email at live at nonsexshow.com. That's N-O-N-S-E-Q show.com. Um, Chris said he might be interested in coming back. We'll see if that is the case. Um, and Team Skeptic will let you. Um, actually, GE, do you have anything coming up in the week that you want to let people know about? Uh, we're going to be back to our normal, um, you know, uh, Tuesday Bible studies. So there will be that. And just, uh, you know, anti-resurrection shit. For you know this month, that's pretty much what I'm focusing on. Excellent. And um, Team Skeptic, you get the last word. Take us out. Yeah, uh, a lot of people don't know yet that me and Fight the Flat Earth actually started a second channel together um, called Science or Satire, and we're basically it's a little bit different. We're going to be taking more of a satirical look at science, at some of these pseudoscience claims, as well as we're going to be having guests on for interviews. We have a segment that as we've done two shows and we have a segment that's really fucking popular. It's called My Buddy's an Idiot. So uh, everybody in the chat says My Buddy's an Idiot because this and we read it out. So uh, you guys should check us out. Like I said, it's Science or Satire. You can find us on the YouTubes, uh, just Science or Satire and subscribe. It'd be fun. Excellent. All right, guys. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with, uh, with uh, Mr. Atheist. We're going to be taking a look at uh, something hilarious, so you're not going to want to miss it. And we have uh, some uh, two interesting guests that will be with us tomorrow, so make sure that you join us for that. If you ever wondered the uh, the answer to this question, how can you milk gold from Satan's tit? 
I have a guy that will uh, show you. Uh, <laughs> more on that next week. Good night, I mean, everyone. I like gold. Can we get some gold? I like tits. This is, this is true. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs>